Hello and welcome to United NDT. My name is Peter Turban. I am the Managing Director of United NDT in Germany. And today I want to inform you about one of our initiatives to provide training courses for people interested in ultrasonic inspection. Our first course is an easy to understand introduction to ultrasonic inspection and ultrasonic testing. It covers not only the basics, it also highlights the special terminology used in ultrasonics. It explains in theory how an ultrasonic instrument is designed and what happens electronically and physically when ultrasonic testing is performed. Whatever is explained in theory is also demonstrated practically using an ultrasonic instrument. This video covers the first two sessions of the course. The full course is available on the Udemy platform. Just go there and search for ultrasonic inspection to find our course. Please click on the subscribe button in case you don't want to miss any new course or any other news provided by United NDT. And now have fun learning ultrasonics the easy way. Welcome again to this online course, Introduction to Ultrasonic Inspection. In session one, we are going to learn about the principle of ultrasonic inspection. But first of all, some general information about the course. Important notice. Whenever you see something written on a yellow background, that information is really important to understand, to keep it in mind when you work in ultrasonic inspection. Expressions in red color are used extensively in ultrasonic inspection and they are crucial for understanding and using ultrasonic inspection equipment. So make sure that you know the meaning of these expressions. Very important. Whenever you see something in red color, keep it in your mind and make sure you understand what it means. Well, the most effective way of learning ultrasonic inspection, from my point of view, is to focus on the practical exercise. Therefore, the lecture I have implemented something and I not only explain the theory of ultrasonic inspection but I also demonstrate the respective features on an ultrasonic instrument. Let's first take a look for the major components of a digital ultrasonic flaw detector. The heart of a ultrasonic flaw detector is a microprocessor. This processor is connected to all other modules and is receiving and sending data and controls the function through various commands. The results will be made visible on the instrument screen. The block diagram on the next page, I will go deeper into that, shows the layout of a flaw detector instrument. One more information. For the practical demonstrations, the standard ultrasonic instrument UTPOT from Sonotron NDT is used. This instrument can be remote controlled from a PC and is therefore ideally suited for training courses. The ultrasonic instrument may be operated via the touchscreen. The UTPOT is operated by the touchscreen or from a remote PC 
over the USB connection. Here's the block diagram of an ultrasonic flaw detector. We see here the microprocessor in the center more or less and the microprocessor is somehow connected to the instrument with all the functions here, all the measurements made and the so-called A-scan display. You will learn about that later. So it will show us the results of any inspection provided we have done the proper calibration. This microprocessor is connected first of all to a transmitting module. The transmitting module transmits a pulse to the probe. Here there is a probe connection that means there's a transducer connected to this outlet of the instrument and that means the transducer will get a pulse from the transmitter and that pulse, that electrical pulse will hit a piezoelectric element in the probe the probe is also called transducer and that one starts to vibrate so means it is producing the mechanical vibration which is actually then converted into ultrasound waves. You see that here also the uh, processor for the image is connected providing information related to the image itself to the A-scan image and now as we have seen the transmitter we also can look for the receiver there is also a switch here if it is connected with each other it is only one transducer connected you can actually connect two transducers to work with one sending and the other one receiving but in this case and that's the usual application it's uh, actually a shortcut Cut it, and that means we have one transducer, one probe only connected. So once the pulse has been sent, there is a waiting time before the next pulse will be sent, and that waiting time is quite long. And within that waiting time, you get re re response from the sound wave coming out of the material. You, it comes back to the probe it hits the piezoelectric crystal and that one will start to vibrate and here the transfer the transversion from mechanical vibration into uh, electrical pulse will be done and that electrical pulse will then go up here go to the receiver will be digitized and somehow reach also the microprocessor and then it will de be displayed on the screen. So let's the, the principle of uh, the block diagram actually of an uh, ultrasonic flaw detector. Now let's take a deeper look into how ultrasonic inspection works As already explained, we have a transducer, also called probe. The transducer is somehow coupled to a test piece of this size. And there is a piezoelectric element. It's a crystal or some other material, something which can, can vibrate when it receives the electrical pulse. and that means we are getting a pulse here through that cable to the transducer it will go towards the piezoelectric crystal or piezoelectric element that element starts to vibrate and finally we will have a wave going through the material 
hits a reflector, here we have a crack for example, it hits the reflector. When the reflector is in parallel to the surface, it will be reflected back. Meanwhile, the piezoelectric crystal became still. Now it hits the crystal. The crystal starts to vibrate again. And now it's just the opposite thing going on. This vibration will be converted into an electrical signal. And that signal will then go back through that cable to the instrument and then it can be displayed on the screen. Now as mentioned already, the pulse which is received here um, is not a constant pulse as such. It is not constantly transmitted. There is a waiting time between two pulses. And that waiting time is actually also defined by the pulse repetition frequency, the so-called PRF. You see this is also in red, um, shown in red color, which actually means this is an important expression to know and to understand the pulse repetition frequency. Okay, just to get a better idea here, we go deeper into that. These pulses are sent with a certain repetition frequency. Once a pulse arrives at the piezoelectric crystal or the element in the transducer, the crystal starts to vibrate, means the electrical energy provided at the piezoelectric crystal is converted into mechanical energy in vibration. In case the transducer is acoustically connected to a test piece using a couplant, this couplant is oil or water, an ultrasonic wave is then created in the material and this wave propagates through the test piece, as already shown before. Now, coming back and explain a bit about the coupland. Ultrasound is a high, uh, has a high frequency and that, that's why we do not, we are not able to hear it. The human ear is maximum, when you are young, able to hear something like 20 kilohertz, which is also not very common, but some people can do that. Anyway, um, ultrasound is much higher, let's say 2 to 4 megahertz is the standard frequency which is very often used. And those uh, high frequencies are not traveling through air. It's not possible to travel through air. That's why we cannot hear it. And because the frequency is very high. Uh, we need to have a, something like a coupland. A coupland is a media which is placed between the transducer and the test piece. And that media can be oil or can be water, air or other liquids or grease or something like that. Whatever is more a liquid uh, media will act as a connector between the transducer and the test object. So then the sound can travel through that layer of coupland and then inside the test piece and gets reflected from somewhere. The ultrasonic wave travels with a certain speed. That's also important to understand. This speed, this sound velocity, so-called sound velocity, this is also um, some expression which is very uh, common and very often used. So you have to understand what it means. The sound velocity is a material constant. And you see also this is in yellow background color, which means important to understand. It's a material constant. What does that mean? For example, if you have an uh, um, unknown material, you can just measure the sound velocity using an ultrasonic instrument, and then you know what kind of material it is. Yeah, because there's a table showing sound velocities 
four different materials and uh, you can identify what material it is. It's actually used for that purpose also, the ultrasonic inspections. So in case the sound wave hits a flaw, crack or pore or whatever, like this one, which is parallel to the surface, also important, must be parallel to that surface, the wave will be reflected back to the probe, back to the transducer. And it travels back to the transducer. And this reflected wave is often called an echo. You will also hear that in ultrasonic inspection very often. They are talking about, people are talking about echoes on the screen, for example, echoes coming back out of the material and so on. So that's the reflected wave which has been uh, sent back to the probe and then analyzed and displayed. I also mentioned that this is parallel to the surface. If it is inclined, the wave will hit this piece, but will not be re the f uh, wave will not be reflected back. It will reflect it in some other direction, like this one, and goes down and here, and so on. So will not be evaluated. We will not be able to evaluate the reflection with the transducer. There are other methods to check for cracks which are inclined and so on. We, we might come back to that later. Now we are coming to see the practical, uh, practical demonstration. We want to show what exactly was shown before. A sound wave travels through a test piece. This is the equipment we are going to use through the online course. This is the flaw detector. One can see here all the different settings possible and here the so-called A-scan where you see actually reflections from the, from the material or signals you get from the probe whatsoever. Now, we have a probe over here. This is the ultrasonic probe, a rather tiny one. There are much bigger ones available, but we use this tiny one to have, uh, with a higher frequency, to have rather good signals from this test piece. This test piece is a so-called V2 calibration block. It's used a lot in the uh, for autotonic uh, calibrations on steel. This is made of standard steel, carbon steel. And we are using this now for some tests. We want to measure autosonically the thickness from one side. So we want to get a reflection from the back wall. This piece is 12.5 uh, mm in thickness. Since uh, ultrasonic sound cannot travel through air, we need to couple the probe using some coupling. This is some oil now. I put some oil here on this test piece and now I contact, uh, connect the probe to the surface and we see on the screen we get an indication. You see when I put it down we get an indication. This indication is coming from the back wall of that test piece. What happens now is that we get the ultrasonic electrical pulse through that uh, cable from the instrument and here inside this uh, housing, there's a piezoelectric crystal, piezoelectric element also called, a bit deeper inside. And when the, uh, the electrical pulse hits that uh, crystal, it starts to vibrate. 
So that means the electrical energy is transferred into mechanical energy. That type of vibration is then causing the ultrasonic wave which runs through uh, from the surface of the element to the surface of the probe of this transducer. It's also called transducer. Probe and transducer is the same meaning. And then it, when I couple it, it runs through the material and I get a reflection from the back wall. And now I can measure it using this tool here. This is a so-called monitor gate. It actually analyzes any signal, the high signal in that so-called monitor gate and then measures the distance from zero to the peak of the signal. And we see here it measures SA, that means the sound pass in gate A, this is called the gate A, is 12 millimeter. Now we know that this one is 12.5 millimeter, but we measure 12 so that's something wrong. The calibration is not yet uh, correct. So we will see how we can correct this in the following videos. So welcome to session 2, the basics of ultrasonic inspection. First we need to explain a bit more about certain terms used pulse repetition frequency, PRF and sound velocity. We actually talked about this already in the first session, but let's talk about it a bit more to have a better understanding. So the pulse repetition frequency and sound velocity is uh, explained over here. The PRF stands for the number of pulses sent in one second. So suppose the PRF, the pulse repetition frequency, is set to 500 Hz on the instrument, on the ultrasonic instrument. It means that per second we have 500 pulses sent to the transducer, to the probe. Transducer and probe is the same meaning. The time between two subsequent pulses is calculated as 1 divided by 500, 1 second divided by 500, is 0 0.002 second. So we have, I have here shown how the pulses uh, look like and what the waiting time between those pulses is. So we have from one pulse, say the maximum peak on the first pulse, to the next one, the transmitted path to the next one is 0.002 seconds, provided we have set it to 500 megahertz, which is a quite common value. Uh, it's even higher in most of the cases. And what you see here, by the way, the type of pulse, how it goes up high a high amplitude, then a low amplitude, then it goes uh, up again, but not the same height as you see. That means there is a certain damping. The pulse is not going for a long time. There's a damping material behind the, the piezoelectric uh, element, which damps the pulse after receiving the first uh, electrical pulse. So it's a rather short time it comes down and reaches almost the zero line. And then we have a long waiting time between those parts and that's important this waiting time before we send the next one. So in case the test piece is made out of steel the sound travels with a sound velocity of 5920 meter per second. You see, it's also in red color, means important to remember. 
the sound velocity in steel is 5920 meter per second so it's very fast this value is a constant for the sound velocity of steel it's a constant sound velocity is in general a constant for the material as we have learned before in 0.002 seconds the sound wave is traveled 5920 meter per second multiplied with 0.002 second 11 is 11.84 meters which is quite a long time in this short uh, a, a long way in, in this uh, short time 11.84 meters which means when the PRF of 500 Hertz is uh, selected and, and we inspect steel there is a rather long waiting time before the next pulse is transmitted and within this waiting time over here we can get some reflections from flaws which might come back to the transducer then reach the electric the piezoelectrical crystal in the transducer causing the conversion from mechanical energy vibration into electrical energy pulse and finally this creates a signal on the screen all right i think that makes it clear how things are working we are sending pulses with a certain pulse repetition frequency and there's a long waiting time between two pulses and within that time we receive from the material reflections and so on and that type of uh, signals we receive can be analyzed and then um, shown on the screen Now we explain a bit uh, about the so-called A-scan, a very important uh, expression also. This is an A-scan over here. This is called the A-scan. And actually the axis, the x-axis stands for the time or also the distance depending on the way you calibrate the unit actually we want to calibrate in the distance not in the time and the y axis is here it's the amplitude height it's actually the intensity of the echo of the signal received from any any reflection All right, a signal we receive from the transducer, actually a reflection from the material which then is converted into a signal received, will be amplified or weakened depending on the settings on the instrument. And then it will be digitized and finally displayed on the screen. Now what we see here is the typical display on an instrument screen. This display is called the A-scan. On the left it shows the transmitting pulse. Here, transmitted pulse. That one is shown. Which is uh, generated by the instrument and then sent to the transducer with a certain number of pulses the display will be updated for example 50 times per second means 50 Hertz update rate on the screen so that means the digital screens will be updated with a certain frequency similar to a TV screen or something and for the human eye you can actually not see the, uh, the updated uh, signals at all it looks like a stable signal more or less on the screen when the instrument when the ultrasonic wave propagates 
through the test piece. That means here it propagates through the test piece. It gets reflected at the back wall here and runs back to the probe where the piezoelectric element converts the vibration into electrical energy, a voltage. And this voltage causes then the amplitude shown on the screen, on this A scan. If properly calibrated, the signal comes at a distance equivalent to the thickness of the piece. In this case you see we have a certain length of the test piece and the amplitude which is shown here on the A scan has the maximum amplitude exactly at the end of this test piece. Means here we have properly calibrated everything and when we analyze the, the signal here, the distance after proper calibration, we will measure exactly this distance. This is important to understand because it actually means that you can measure any thickness from one side. Suppose you have a pipe and you don't know the thickness of that pipe. How to know the thickness of that pipe? You have only access to one side. And with this ultrasonic inspection you have just to put a transducer on. Of course you have to calibrate it properly, the instrument properly, and then measure the thickness of the pipe from one side. That's an important feature and um, well, uh, very often used in ultrasonic sickness gauges also. Let's look uh, on the A scan again. So we see that the signal comes exactly here at the end of the material. But now, one thing is important also to understand is the ultrasonic wave actually has traveled to the back wall, got reflected and was running through and back. Actually it has done the, uh, the traveling through that test piece twice. But here we have the signal over here only and it looks like we are measuring only one time movement through the test piece. But that's not true. The instrument automatically divides the, the time which has spent to travel through by two. This is uh, automatically done in order to do uh, easy measurement of the thickness straight away. So I hope this has been clear. Now we will do some practical demonstration again. A transducer will be placed on a V2 calibration block and we will see the A scan display again on the instrument itself. A bit about the V2 calibration block in, in the ultrasonic inspection there are two major calibration blocks used, a V1 and a V2. And when you hear about that you just should know, okay, they are existing, you can do certain things with it. We are not uh, going deeply into the calibration blocks uh, in this course. But in the other courses uh, it's of course very very important when you go for uh, level 1 or level 2 training course.
So as I said, I will now go and uh, connect the instrument to the computer. So I have here a cable and I connect it here. And now what I have is I run everything, that means the software from the computer itself and we get that image here and I have I put it down on the uh, on the video and you will see much better what is happening here all right I connect again and let's a bit explain about uh, a scan what a scan means so we have uh, again use the V2 block we uh, put the probe on we get some signal what I can do is I can freeze the signal now so lift up the probe and it remains the signal remains here on the screen now let's have a closer look to the so-called A scan this is the A scan and Within that A scan, we see some signal over here, which is actually the so called uh, initial pulse, the transmitted pulse from the electronics to the uh, piezoelectric element in the probe. That causes this kind of signals over here. And after that, it comes to a stop. The vibration stops, we have a certain waiting time and after that waiting time we get this signal which comes from the back wall and then we can measure it. That was quite clear so far. What we see here, this axis, the x-axis is actually either the time axis or you can also calibrate it so that it is at the depth uh, axis. Now we have calibrated in such a way that it gives us indications in millimeters so it's the distance means the distance from the surface of the material that it would be the right thing from the material surface to the reflector is measured. So this axis is the distance. Now the other axis, the y axis, is the axis for the amplitude height, the height of the amplitude, which is somehow giving us an idea about the size of the reflector. Now it's a back wall which is reflecting, so it's a huge one, it's a huge reflector and that's usually leads, uh, comes to a very high amplitude. But we have the chance just to, to manipulate that, for example, this is called the gain, we can manipulate that by, oops, um, I need to connect the probe again. Um, manipulate that using here those uh, arrow keys increasing the so-called dB now uh, this is the, the unit for the, the gain the dB it's not the it's not a linear relationship here it's a, a logarithmic one that's why it is dB uh, anyway I can increase increase and I increase everything on the screen of course or I can decrease over here the increment I can use here you see it's now 1 dB so every time I click here it's 1 dB less or 1 dB more means I can analyze the sensitivity let's say and uh, amplitude height the gain of a certain reflector uh, using also those kind of settings. Yeah, that's the A scan.
If you like what you have seen, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe by clicking on the United NDT logo and go for the complete course under udemy.com searching for ultrasonic inspection. Thank you.